Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Hi there, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We are here today to talk about V for Vendetta, and as always, I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. Today's movie is, as we just said, V for Vendetta. We are going to uh, talk about the movie here. Yep. Dusty's done a lot of stuff. Oh, and, God, uh, yeah, this movie has a lot, but we I haven't convinced it in a while. Man, I know. It's been a little bit. So this yeah. might be a little shaky. It's been yep. a few weeks. Yeah, it might be shaky for you. I'm getting drunk. Um, <laughs> then Nathaniel will bring us into the gaming side of things, and uh, I will provide a campaign hook, and we'll decide the game, and we'll put it in for the voting. Speaking of getting drunk, that, yeah, those couple of shots of uh, yeah, that's one fourteen. That's stuff. Considering that's, I haven't, other than these grapes that I'm munching on, I haven't had anything since like seven fifteen this morning. When all so. other whiskeys were banned, old granddad <laughs> stayed as medicinal whiskey. Mm-hmm. They've had a lot of time to get their shit right. <laughs> I introduced someone at trivia last night. One of my one of my table mates to uh, um, an old fashioned. What I like them. It's sugar and bitters and booze. I like them. Yeah, the old fashioned's pretty good. I prefer Manhattans myself. Eh, Manhattans for yeah. me are a little hard. But... You know, it takes away from the booze when you guys do that, right? <laughs> you know what I drink. <laughs> I do. <laughs> that, that rum, coke, and pineapple concoction from time to time. Yeah, I mean, it's I haven't in a while. Cause cheaper I got, than getting... I, I got tired of the... Nee, looks from you and Vince. <laughs> we are snobs. <laughs> uh, that's fine. One day, I, I, I like to think ideological purists. One day I'm going to uh, surprise somebody. I think I'm going to wait till it's like Maddie. Be like, hey, Maddie, I want some Coke and wine. <laughs> <laughs> he'll probably run you out. <laughs> no. No, he'll serve it, but he'll judge you. <laughs> well, you know what? That's fine. I'm getting drunk. Don't care. All right, so V for Vendetta. This yes. is one of my favorite movies of all time. You, this, the, you mean the poor man's version of The Count of Monte Cristo? No, I mean the, the good version of The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's basically what I think V for Vendetta is. Find your is. own tree. No, this is better. Okay, <laughs> You mean it's it's Stockholm Syndrome, the movie. There's that, yeah. too. Yeah. No, this is a really good movie. I, I've always enjoyed it. It's wrong. It Why? is fucking wrong. And Why? here's where the... this. Okay, so this is where because the political guy starts right thoughts, here. It gets him wrong in every single possible level. We took about the three whole, minutes to get into the political spectrum The whole glorification <laughs> of Guy Fawkes and turning him into some fucking rebel. Hold for just one this second. Movie, that is not the political spectrum. The political <laughs> spectrum is coming. It's not even coming This yet. is history. <laughs> okay. Guy no. Fawkes, this, this movie... It glorified Guy Fawkes so much so that an entire nation of Americans believe that the 5th of November is a holiday celebrating this comic book. <laughs> Whereas no. the, yeah, they believe that European or that uh, English. England, the English the celebrate English. Guy Fawkes. No, no, they burn him in they effigy. They celebrate his death. <laughs> remember, remember the 5th of November. You should not. You should remember this. I know of no reason the 5th of the the, the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot is because so people don't fucking do that shit again yep. because Guy Fox was a papist asshole. Well, you know, um, you know, this is <sighs> a, I feel strongly about this an, an alternate universe, right? What was what was the point of of uh, maybe, what was the point of alternate being Guy Fox actually being cool or something? No, right? no, it's um, this is uh, fascism is one. Mm-hmm. America has lost World War II. England yep. has lost and World War II. Actually, we're going through another civil war at the same time. Yeah. This is going well, on. this is no. This is also significantly further in the future than now. Did yeah. You see the dates. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, I don't the, think it's an alternate timeline. I think it was simply meant to be the future. I, I, I think Robin Hood already having been taken, there wasn't much else that they could have picked from for well, a. They could have just picked run. Robin Hood again. <laughs> I'm not just you know, saying. <laughs> Robin Hood never gets old. He's timeless. Yeah, Robin He's Hood does get old when Russell Crowe plays Robin Hood. Oh, did that happen? Yes. Yeah. Was it worse than He Who Shall Not Be Named? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. That, that's a hard you guys thing ever to saw be that? worse than. No. Yeah, uh, Russell Crowe played Robin Hood, and Kate Blanchett is like Maid Marian. Well, I don't remember. I don't remember which one like, of you told me to watch it after the Three Musk the Three Musketeers. But there's a Robin Hood TV show. That's me. yeah. That's, that's pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah. That's where I started watching it. It's a little hipsterish, yeah. but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I also started watching the Three Musketeers 1960 show, and it's hard, <laughs> but God 
Blessed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, ju- I'm just saying there's not a lot of uh, anti-establishment, which, you know, right or wrong, Guy Fox was, figures. Well, I mean, yes. To choose from. You notice he also thinks of himself as a monster in this movie. That this new world he's creating isn't for him. So it seems fitting that he dons the face of a monster. No, okay, no, I get that. I get that he thinks he's a monster, but he glorifies Guy Fox. Right? The entire opening crawl mm-hmm. was just, Guy Fox was great, Guy Fox was great. It even completely missed the part that Guy Fox was a coward up to his own death who leapt off the side so that he wouldn't have to face his punishment. They didn't yeah. even show that in the movie. They just showed him hanging there, but that's not what happened. Maybe that is the point of, maybe that is alternate history. Yeah. Maybe it's from an alternate history where Guy Fox actually wasn't a papist Well, asshole. anything that's outside of the, you know, we, we've cl- seen, yeah. especially with this movie actually, you know, had foreshadowed a lot of, of what's starting to go on now politically. But I think it's a, one of those things where if it's not within somebody's direct realm, they're not going to really care about the history of it. So I think everybody that went to go see this movie at the, when it came out, was like, I have no idea what history is, so this looks fun. Yeah, I came to see Prothero be Rush Limbaugh as he's screaming in the shower and swallowing handfuls of pills. <laughs> yeah. I, came, I mainly came to see it when I was uh, younger, because this, what was this? 2006. Yeah, it was, mm, this yeah, was, it was 11 years ago, yeah. And I remember somebody was like, you can see Natalie Portman's nipples in it. Oh, and I went and saw it. And, yep. <laughs> if you want to see more movie, of her, yeah. go see the movie Closer. Now, yeah, I've heard it's it. You know, uh, I've heard it's dark. It it is dark. Yeah. Uh, mm. Wasn't she in Black Swan? Wasn't yes. That Natalie Portman. That, yeah, that movie was me, dark. Uh, Mila Kunis. Ugh. Okay. Good anyway, movie. That's a good movie. Anyway, though. one thing that really bothered me is he was specifically talking about Guy Fox being a champion of people and freedom, but he wasn't. No, he, he never, was a champion. Where did you get that? Right when from the he, say he that? talks about like freedom, freedom of the common man. And the whole where did he, beginning of the movie? Was he about talked that. about that and he wore the guy fox mask but he never referenced guy fox specifically at the first two minutes of the movie is a flashback are, yeah. not him speaking well no but then he goes <laughs> I mean, okay, sorry <laughs> he does talk about it we'll go back and watch it and find this he specifically talks about guy fox being freedom you know a champion of freedom but guy fox wanted it's to simply inferenced but it's not it's not directly stated guy he, fox was nothing but a a fall guy who took the blame the guy who was just holding All he was was the guy holding the wick Mm -hmm. when the people arrived of a terrorist group who wanted to install a religious government over the current government of England. Right. So, and thank you, this movie, for making Guy Fawkes masks the most goddamn annoying things on the internet and filling them in every riot ever with nothing but anarchists who wear these because they're cowards. I have strong opinions. And you wondered if this was going to get apolitical. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) I have now had three shots of 114 <laughs> and fuck Guy Fox. I think this movie just tells me that if you're going to be a crazy vigilante or terrorist, that it's important to be well-spoken, witty, mm-hmm. deadly, and on the side of the masses. Yeah. And yeah. Hugo Weaving. Yeah. It's that that helps to too. Hugo if yeah. you have a bassy yeah. voice, that, that's going to take you far. Mm-hmm. I did. It, I did repeatedly expect to hear mrs anderson yes <laughs> yeah so did i many, many many every movie he's in like in lord of the rings throw it into the into mount doom mr anderson <laughs> you know that's just, i i like this because it's a blueprint for basically what happened and seeing as how it was 11 started 14 years ago mm-hmm. a lot of it came just about the right way yeah you know, it's, it's a fairly what, the predictions yeah. of the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Currently. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, high chancellor Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trump Palpatine. Oh. I would have uh, I would have enjoyed it without the uh, the whole Lark Hill story, you know, where the political prisoners were sent to be experimented on and the criminals were sent. And that was Wachowski heavy handed writing in action. Yeah. Yeah. Which is odd because a lot of it was really subtle. A lot of it was well balanced. Like the the Rush Limbaugh Prospero thing that well, that was laying it on with a trowel. I accept yeah. that that was not subtle, um, but a that lot was pretty I'll, awesome though. Yeah, a lot of it was was uh, it, it wasn't thrown in your face as it is in in movies these mm-hmm. days commonly. It was just uh, laid out for you to to think about and make your own it was deductions. Bread, breadcrumb. Yeah, it is interesting watching it, and you like the moment you see someone on screen, you're just like, they're gonna die. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna die, and you probably have a good idea how. 
Uh, what do you got on this, Dusty? <laughs> well, as it was, it is the adaptation of Alan Moore's and David Lloyd's graphic novel. Which Great is graphic novel. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and much like when we when we did it, we're in, I, I don't want to do too much of like what's different from the graphic novel versus yeah, what's yeah, that's the movie fair. because that in itself can take up a whole podcast. So this is just the movie. And if you haven't seen the movie, as always, there are spoilers. So go and check out the movie right now. We'll be here waiting when you get back. Just hit pause, as Matthew always says. Right? I, I said it once, actually. Nathaniel's oh, been saying okay. it. Well, whatever. Yeah, spoilers, movies, that's that's us. Yeah. <laughs> so it does star Hugo <laughs> Weaving and Natalie Portman as a vengeful anarchist and his protege fighting a fascist government in the near future, as we spoke a moment ago about future England. Uh, and it was a critical and commercial success for the Wachowskis. Uh, it was their largest since The Matrix came about. And also, as Nathaniel uh, bemoaned, it pl- it uh, popularized the guy Fox masks and has been a favorite of real-life protesters since then. Uh, it also has a body count of 73 people. That sounds about right. Nah. That's it? Yeah, 73. That's They're it. only knives. You're fighting guns! No. Which is one of the best scenes. Bullets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That whole knife scene towards the end is one of the best scenes. But... Uh, so we have Natalie Portman as Evie. I think most everyone knows who Natalie Portman is, but in case you don't, she is known for Leon the Professional, Black Swan, uh, Star Wars Episodes 1 through 3, Thor and Thor the Dark World, and as we mentioned just a few moments ago, Closer. So what her alignment? <laughs> Fuck if I know. <laughs> she bounces all over the place. All of the characters were so cardboarded. Lawful good. Awful good. Yeah, yeah, might as well. I mean, everybody. I don't, I don't think they were cardboard. I thought. I thought. I think the characters were well written. And every character was an extreme really? cardboard caricature. Like the, yeah, wow. they were all just like straight out of. Oh my comic god! Book. I'm going to demand really? you get those tight pants on. <laughs> if or wear glasses. On hey, you know what? You remember how he hated Ninja Turtles? Well, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I tore into him too. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. I'll take it. You're I right hated this movie. Yeah. I, right. I remember seeing watching it this week to kind of catch up and get ready and realizing, oh yeah, that's right. That's why I haven't watched this ever again cuz it's awful. Beyond Guy Fox, what? The characters are terrible. Why? Not a single character is interesting. The only interesting Even character, v? the only interesting character I would wager is the cop. And probably not even the cop. Why don't you like V? What? Why don't you like V? Again, he's just a caricature. He's just I he's just the unstoppable badass. I don't like he's unstoppable very, yeah. badass. He's, he's very idea. much stopped. Yeah, they sent him in with flowers because he was dead. Yeah, he achieved he's also his been... goals. And in the comics, he she becomes his protege. Mm-hmm. He is nothing but an unstoppable badass, and I hate unstoppable badass. But he's also been also experimented on long so hair things... with blades. Don't like long hair with blades. Come on, Sephiroth. It's, it's been done. It's called <laughs> fiction. Sephiroth. For a reason. It's been done. He is what, I what really TV Tropes refers to as the badass long coat. That he didn't take his revenge. He left it to her as... Yeah, that was I mean, a good you're thing. talking about to her cardboard after and After the Stockholm growth. Syndrome had set in. <laughs> like, come on. I don't know, man. I, I, don't I really think know. you're talking about your I don't ass really know this. if it was Stockholm I think Syndrome. You, I think you don't like Guy Fox, and you are such a history nerd that that poisoned the whole movie for you. I'm not even a history nerd. I didn't even know who Guy Fox was until this movie. And then until you read the I Wikipedia this, page? And then I was like, this can't be true. This I mean, this is odd from right. the man who brought me Nightbreed. I'm just saying. That's a higher standard. I think Nightbreed it's a is much... a better story. Nightbreed. Oh, oh, my God. God. Wow. Yeah. That said, oh, I think I need another <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> just wait until we get to the gaming session. <laughs> oh, but but all the characters are caricatures. They are They are like political cartoons in action. They have no personality and nothing. They have no redeemable qualities. And again, I know you didn't want to go into the comic, but in the comic, you think all Natalie of the Portman characters too? are people. All of the bad guys are people. You see their points of view. They are not extreme, you know, talking. They're, they're not. Yeah, Mickey you Mouse have a 400 page graphic novel that has to be whittled down to. Um, to be you fair, know, two hours. Yeah, well, whittled less than down two hours. To a 40 page graphical novel commentary on the times with interesting points that need to be made. They did the same with, with Watchmen, and they still preserved the characters. Say what you will about that movie. They they were true to the characters in the comic. In this movie, they weren't. They were just now... So you're saying yeah. that the Evie character was also cardboard? Basically. Yeah, I yeah. completely disagree. How? 
Yeah. I didn't really get a read on her. I didn't. I didn't really? figure out. I had no I mean, history. She bounced but, back and yeah. forth between. I had no sympathy with her. Morals, she, even. No, really? She, moral she's compass chased by the, chased by the state. Hidden. He decides to make her into something like him by giving her. Well, he gave her um, a choice. Any character that is introduced as a damsel in distress in my books, it's kind of low. That's bad writing. I don't think she was introduced as a damsel in distress. She was reading a new, She was watching a newspaper. Walked outside and almost got raped. Yes. That's her introduction. Come on. Like, I don't think the Wachowskis would write that today. No, because, you know, knowing the people kind in of tight people, jeans would tear it apart. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, <laughs> I just don't think they would. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. No, that's fine. I mean, I went no, off not on fine. that. You're grief. wrong. And that makes you a bad person. I don't agree with <laughs> All right. This podcast <laughs> over. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um honestly I, I I think I think you're being a little harsh but I mean you're allowed to do that. I've also okay. It's it's okay I'm, to be I'm wrong. Being, it's I'll okay be to be wrong forever being, on the internet I preserved for lot, posterity. Especially if you go in the Wayback machine. I, I am being a lot harsher and more it's intense the old granddad, with that harshness currently because I've had three shots of 114 old granddad. But uh, it's a bad craftsman that blames the tools. Yeah, take some of that, would you? You think there's any like <laughs> the notes. I hated this movie so much. I think all of my notes for it are less than ten words yeah. to combine. The first Good thing three I've being, got five pages of notes. Then. The first B three being fuck guy Fox. The second being Lowell Stockholm syndrome. Like, come on. So anyway, there, there was about a half. A we were talking there. about alignments. I'll go with Lawful Good. Why not? I don't care about her. Okay, so <laughs> okay. moving into Hugo Weaving playing V, another well known actor. He's also known for the Matrix trilogy. The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series, Captain America, the first Avenger, the Transformer series, and Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, to Thank name you. many. So <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of him his portrayal of V? I thought it was great. All right. What about you? He's okay. I, I don't like the badass long coat characters. It's just a character thing. I thought Hugo Weaving was awesome. Uh, yes, and uh, portraying that character. I think you have a fetish for real people. I do. I don't, I don't think you like heroes. I don't. I do not like supers. I don't like. Why do you watch characters. fiction then? What? Why do you watch fiction? It depends. I generally like the ones with realish people. So I like I like stories that could have happened with real people. Okay. You know, I tend to get into that kind of stuff. Like even when I play D and D, unless I'm just like running a pull out my ass dungeon crawl for people I don't care about or mm. characters I don't care about, and I'm drunk. <laughs> if I'm running a game that I want to like. I want characters that have goals. And you see, I like heroes. I'm surrounded by the unwashed masses and their sniveling little problems and their tiny, tiny little triumphs all my life. I like real heroes. I like heroes. I, I love Mr. Supers. Rogers, a real hero. Yeah. Good. I, like I, I love Anna heroes, my, too. So. Yeah, but would you pay 20 bucks a pop and then 20 more for popcorn to go see a story about him? About Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I would pay to go to see a... A movie, a biopic about Mr. Rogers. I want to see Seth Rogen play Mr. Rogers. <gasps> I would pay to see <laughs> Seth Rogen play Mr. Rogers. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> or Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I, I think. So initially, anyway. <laughs> James Purfoy played V, but who, he who left. He? James Purfoy. Uh, I know that name. He's been in a bunch of movies. Did he come but, up in a recent movie? Was he supposed to be cast in something like It? Uh, was he I maybe supposed so, to be the, yes. one of the 60 hicks possible? Yes. <laughs> I mean. uh, he was in uh, Mansfield Park. Uh, he was also in A Knight's Tale. He played Edward, the Black Prince of Wales, uh, slash Sir, Sir Thomas Colville. God, that was an awful movie. I love that what movie? movie. A Knight's Tale. Uh, Resident Evil. It was funny. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Solomon Kane, John Carter, and uh, recently coming up in Churchill. He's playing King George the okay. Sixth. Um, but he initially was playing V in this movie, but he left citing difficulties wearing the mask for the entire film. <laughs> he saw the future. He was replaced by Hugo Weaving, obviously. Neutral good for V? Chaotic. I'd go chaotic good. Yeah, I'm going to have to say chaotic. All right. I, I think chaotic. But definitely good. I don't actually see him harm any innocence. Well, except for her. I mean, he had a purpose for it. Well, I think he he was just wanting to open her eyes. That was the whole thing. He was yeah, crazy. you he can was want to open her, her eyes and remove someone's eyelids. He that doesn't make you a good her a person. Choice. <laughs> you know, right. it, it was hard for me to actually put good on that. I mean, I think principled 
if you want to take it in the well, riff's direction you like. But I, I think he knew um, she was already up to that like that point where she just needed to be tipped and he was just giving her that option so stockholm syndrome with a purpose no, i don't yeah. think it was stockholm syndrome at all oh it totally was it totally now yeah. while that's a turnoff for nathaniel <laughs> I, I can I, I can agree with what it was mm-hmm. but in a strange justifying the means kind of way you know okay if you present it like that i can i can yeah I, i'll go i mean with it. nathaniel's not wrong he straight up did some bad things to that lady and he shouldn't have yeah and and in a perfect world he was training he, protege. He, yeah, he wouldn't have. But when you're making a psychotic terrorist, you can't really follow the normal but, societal codes in making them. If you if you look at the the the, sim, uh, the symbolism behind it, he walks through the fire. When oh no, I, and I love that. Scene. Yeah, and then and then, and then when she when she accepts everything, she's in the water, and that's yeah, yeah. the whole redemption thing. So, <sighs> and you know, it is pretty shitty when one character's redemption is another person's Stockholm syndrome. Though, like he redeemed himself. By torturing her, is that what you're saying? Like, no, I, th- I think <laughs> it's not what I was. I think it's, it's good her point, redemption. But yeah, her. Why did she need to be redeemed? She was a boring, milk toast kind of character. Yeah. What was the redemption? I mean, is that even a life? Does it deserve not to be molded, changed? <sighs> All of those other people were redeemed. Nice. By being allowed to redeem themselves on their own by putting on that costume and coming to a protest. He, they didn't get tortured. They, they wouldn't have protested without the two of them, though. Why? Why? What do you well, mean? technically, just him. Just okay. him. I mean, she didn't chip in anything on a massive mailing. She I just mean... pulled the lever at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He could have pulled that lever on his own right before he passed out. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I honestly, I really do like that he left it up to her. I think that was good. Okay. It doesn't make up for it. But... <laughs> then we have Stephen Ray, <laughs> who played Finch. <laughs> I thought uh, he was great. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Uh, he was also in Fear.com, The Musketeer, The Crying Game, Underworld, The Awakening, and one of my favorite characters, even though it was a small character, uh, he was in Interview with a Vampire. Who was he in that? Uh, he was, oh, fuck, I just forgot the name. When Louis goes uh, to Paris and he, he meets up with... Um, oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. I got you. Yeah, this, I got you. He I'm played there. the trickster. Yeah, yeah. The one that put Claudia and, and the other woman in the well and let mm-hmm. him burn. Uh, I forget his name. I can't. I, That's I right. blame the old, old granddad. So uh, sounds like Stockholm syndrome to me. You'll be fine. <laughs> I just have to go out in the rain. Yeah, you know, it's raining outside, so I'll go outside and I'll just, be redeemed. Just, just, right? just cry yourself free and raise uh, your arms. I already shaved my head. So, <laughs> uh, so what do you think of uh, what do you guys think of his uh, alignment? So I would say somewhere other in than between... cardboard. No, I no, he was the no, only he, interesting character. He definitely had a yeah. character arc with growth. Yeah, he did. Unlike uh, everyone else who just had character arcs with growth. No, everybody, <laughs> nobody else in this whole fucking movie had character arcs with any kind of growth. I, every character in this movie had growth of some um, kind. No, 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 he's he's not wrong. But there were others. It wasn't just him. Okay, maybe John Hurt didn't have. I think growth. the no, more John John Hurt was very much John Hurt. A, a talking head, <laughs> and he he None played the that till the end grew, until they were all awful and everywhere. until his death, yeah. which was nice. It was nice to see him break down. Yeah, to I reveal think, the cowardice at the at the end of the hate. So to answer your question, I would say that he was somewhere between lawful good and lawful neutral, because he he was a member of the party mm-hmm. and he believed in the party, but he also we never see him do anything bad. And he seemed to genuinely care and think hard about the consequences yeah. of his action. He was I on a sliding scale. I, I yeah. would agree with lawful neutral. Yeah. Because, as you say, he was he was involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was certainly in the higher ranks. It's not like he was a nameless foot soldier. No. He sat down. Uh, the guy knew his name. You know, the, it, this was a thing. So, he was in the Council of Five. Yeah. But I, in order to restore balance, which I think is a very important part of being neutral, he chose this action so yeah lawful neutral is mine what about you i would agree with that okay the reason i go with good is that he had sympathy in his heart Mm -hmm. he seemed to like he never immediately did something good but he was clearly not okay with evil yeah and like upon learning of the awful things that the party did he was hurt by it yeah so while taking reports from the Fingerman rapist. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, there was His that... boys on the street. Yeah, there was that whole thing with the Fingerman, and it was, they were called that because, uh, you know, the Chancellor was the head, the television station was supposed to represent the, the mouth, the visual and audio surveillance was the eye and the ear, and Finch um, 
was uh, the no- part of the nose. Mm-hmm. That was his whole thing. And then uh, what was the other guy's name? Creedy was that part of the hand. Yeah. So now Creedy, yes, one dimensional, very one dimensional. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I I agree with you on that. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So Stephen Fry, who played Dietrich. What do you guys think of Cat him? Good. Oh, I thought he was great. Yeah, Stephen I, I fucking think, Fry. I, think, I know. That was yeah, a great I, character. I'll give him that. I think Steve, uh, yeah, Stephen Fry's pretty and good. And very, yeah. very uh, empathetic. I mean, when, when he's talking about the problems he was facing mm-hmm. in, a, in a fascist regi- regime and the things that he gay, liked, yeah. Uh, um, dude, I mean, he said it with, like, this quiet dignity, and that was... I mean that was that was a really good scene. Yeah, it was. He I said mean, in an interview what what drew him towards the part above everything else. He said, "I get to get beaten down to a bloody pulp, and that's what inter- interests me the most." He's like, "I get to be clubbed to death." I thought that was kind of interesting. I've never heard anyone. Does he die? Speaking of which, "Clubbed to Death" is a song by Rob D on mm-hmm. the Matrix soundtrack. Yeah, I know. It's uh, what you asking? Bringing it back. Yeah, it's one of my uh, favorite um, songs. Yeah. And it's great to work out at the gym because it's seven minutes and twenty six seconds. And yes, he did die. Huh. Yeah. Uh, he was also known. Stephen Fry was known among it's many. Stephen Fry. <laughs> I know it's God. Stephen Fry. Uh, <laughs> Alice through the Looking Glass, The Hobbit series, Twelfth Night, Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, as Mycroft. Uh, he made a great Mycroft too. He made a better Mycroft than the BBC Mycroft, I think. I which BBC? No, the, the one with uh, Benedict uh, High Cheekbones. Cumberbatch. Yes. Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah, I don't I like no. him. You know, he's yeah. a great Sherlock. I love him. But that's the writer. You know that. Yeah, movie. I know. Yeah. I know. He's all, he's also done a lot of. Who uh, else was in here from Dr. Sherlock? Do. So I think Stephen Fry is also known from. You what? Know, Who Britain? else was in here from Sherlock? <laughs> yeah, like everything in Britain. Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Who else was in here from Sherlock? The new series. Uh, yeah, I don't know the cop that the other cop was always talking to. Oh, yes, okay. that's Inspector he's Lestrade. The, inspe- yeah. Oh, yeah. that's Lestrade. Lestrade. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. He was actually really more notice. competent in this yeah. movie than oh, he was in yeah. Sherlock. Okay. Lestrade is always the fall guy for yeah. Sherlock. I mean, yeah. in every version, and, Lestrade and, is bumbling. Yeah. yeah. Then we have John Hurt as Adam Sutler. And I loved I loved the John cinematography Hurt. in this as they slowly go into his poisoned oh, The cinematography is amazing on as this. As he's just speaking this poison. Yeah. And it's just as it... It starts on his eyes, right? It starts mm-hmm. like here, but the focus is on the eyes and you're seeing them flash and like it goes into and his, his cheeks aren't moving, which means he's he's not really engaged because his eyes aren't getting smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just it goes into these poisoned yellow, gross, yeah. black gum teeth. It is such a good shot. It was a good shot. The cinematographer was amazing. Oh, in the whole the thing. The cinematographer yeah. was the star of the show. And in my opinion. I, I have to say, you know how I always bitch about Foley? I don't have any of that here. No. No, no, the, the Foley, Foley was, was incredible all throughout this. I they had a good sized budget, so they could afford yeah. to. Uh, for those of you who don't know John Hurt, if you've been under a rock, uh, is also known for Alien, Hellboy, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. Everything uh, good. John yeah. Hurt's been in it. He was in the Doctor Who as the War Doctor, Snowpiercer. Yeah, he o- was. Only Lovers Left Alive as Marlo, which if you haven't seen that movie, go see it. Snowpiercer was... Yeah. That's the uh, train one, right? Yeah. 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 Where that, the where the world is done and you have to go yeah, forward and back on. Yeah, I, I, need, I need to the see that. I've been that movie. <laughs> I've been meaning to see that movie and uh, I haven't gotten around the to Harry it Potter yet. series and Lord of the Rings. The animated he played Aragorn. He was the voice holy of, shit. That's right. Yep. He who was is, the voice of Aragorn. Who is he in the Harry Potter movies? Uh, he is Ollivander, the one that the, sells the wands. <laughs> yeah. I only know Wait, that name is Ed uh, Vanders. Was he in Pirates too? I don't know. God, he's been no, in. If, if no, you no, I think you're thinking of Bill Nye. If you haven't, you should watch Wizard People, Dear Reader, which is the Brad Neely overdub of the original Harry Potter's movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ed Vanders, that character, the the overdub is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'd say chaotic neutral. Really? He will do anything to I would say get what he wants. I would anything. say lawful evil. No, he's lawful. he's no Vader. No, he's far from Vader. No. What? Okay. Again, remember, these are just nine things. There are shades in every no, single no, one. No, no, we get oh, that. Oh, great. Yeah. But I, I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, chaotic evil because he will just, he, he will, he has no personal compass. Okay. It's what he wants. I think a chaotic evil person would be okay with destroying their own foundation, and he really wasn't. He was. He was I would directly say, threatening three of his underlings. Well, which would be his that's foundation. That's just evil, evil overlord action. <laughs> Come on, that's evil overlord one on one, dude. You clearly haven't taken that course. We should. I should have my people talk to your people, and we'll set that up. 
I think if we're going to go that route, I would say maybe neutral evil because he was, but he was so law. He was the fucking president, you know? That doesn't necessarily make you lawful. It kind of does. does no, it? really. Have you read the newspaper lately? What? <laughs> well, no. No, no, no. again, there's a difference between lawful and the neutrality of the law is the support and the power behind the law. Whereas evil is, I'm going to use the law and abuse the law for my own gains. Oh, agreed. Only thing I ever saw him do was use and abuse the law. I don't really, never really got much of a, again, sh- cardboard character. He was nothing but a caricature of a talking head. Like, he was Big Brother. Yeah, I'll agree to disagree. Yeah. Then we have uh, Tim Pickett Smith, who played Creedy. Who was? Don't care, NPC. Okay. <laughs> Do you? I mean, this is the one where I, I agree yeah. with you. Just, I mean, he, lawful evil and let it go with that. He okay. was a caricature of an evil, yeah. of, an, of an evil henchman. Yeah, he yeah. was yeah. henchman number one. Which is pretty much all he's played. He's played uh, an evil henchman in Quantum of Solace, <laughs> an evil henchman in Alice in Wonderland, an evil henchman in Gangs of New York, yep. an evil henchman ish in Flyboys. And uh, probably every 1990s and then, like, crime one show decent, ever. One good role in Johnny English. <laughs> God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what What was the name of the Lestrade character? Uh, did you Finch. get Did you Finch. get him? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, Finch was oh! his boss. It was no. The no. The, uh, the other cop. He I actually has a lot it. of yeah, a lot of you know speaking parts. I in did this. kept expecting him to betray at some point, but he never did. I did too. Yeah. Ambrose, maybe no, something like that. He always plays a cop, though. I want to say Ambrose. Oh, Rupert Graves. Oh, Graves. There it is. Yeah, Rupert Graves. He what played. His name was Ambrose. Dominic. I don't know. The fried slice is, of course, lawful good. So delicious. The fried what? What? The fried slice. Have you guys ever been to England? No, I've right, never so, been anywhere so, outside so of this country other you, than you, you, like you take on the pan. other side of it's just, what he cooks for when she wakes a up. Super pan. Oh, the, it's in a big so game. What did they good. call it? He called it something else. He called it a. It's a fried slice, and it's so. What was the name good. that Stephen Fry used? Though no I forgot. What you're talking about. something in a basket or it's so egg, egg in the middle. Or... It's so good. It's the breakfast, the little toast and egg breakfast that V made for her in the morning, mm-hmm. and then that Stephen Fry made for her when she slept over. It's kind of a caricature. Okay. The English yeah. don't eat that as much. It's kind of like a treat. But I've had it, and it's really good. I think the fact was that no one had had it in a very long yeah. time. Yeah, it, it's awfully bad for you. It's just, oh, yeah. it's just yeah. pure artery clogging deliciousness, but it is so fucking good. On those rare events when like my girlfriend has left the state or is somewhere else, <laughs> that's inevitably what I make. <laughs> I mean, it's like, there's no one here to catch me. I'm a, I'm a eat that. <laughs> you know? it, it has a fried egg. Yeah. You, you yeah, take, so you take a slice of bread, you pull out the middle. I'm yeah. never going to eat it because I don't like fried eggs ever. The fuck is wrong with the pair of you? <laughs> it's a texture thing. It's a it's a weird texture. How is that thing. different from the grape you're eating? A lot. It doesn't make me throw up for one. The egg. grape is wholesome. <laughs> whereas the fried egg is artery destroying. You guys know that there's no way you're making it past eighty anyway. You know that, right? And I just I can't. <laughs> as a as a kid, my dad like tried to you know force feed me fried eggs and i would always throw them up so to this day i can't eat fried egg i can't eat anything other than like a scrambled egg even then i can't eat an omelet and i know it's just a big scrambled egg force feeding fried eggs that's one thing he didn't try in the prison i think it would have been effective <laughs> apparently yeah. you can make someone break like that you can provoke an autonomous <laughs> reaction <laughs> no i distinctly remember as a kid sitting in, like the high chair like my dad like eat it eat the fried egg and it would make me throw up. It's a therapy session. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I just... All right. So Scarlett this is Johansson. Weird. We, we need to meet every week because shit's getting weird here, guys. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> Kira Knightley, and Bryce Dallas Howard all actually were considered for the por- part of Evie. I think Kira Knightley would have done better. But Natalie Portman actually won the role in the end. I really like well, yeah, she's when British, she had, and that would have been better. When she had shaved her head. That was done in one take with three cameras. And when she was on the couch, this was after her thing. She had V had released her, mm-hmm. and she was out in the world, and she's watching the TV. That pose that she's in there, mm-hmm. like this incredibly intent, but very very vulnerable pose. Like I mean, her head is cocked at a weird angle. Her hand is is tucked back. I mean, there's no mm-hmm. fist shown. That was an incredible piece of physical acting right there. And, she I mean, is a very good physical actress. No. I, there's 
Like, I'm not even going to bother addressing this to Nathaniel because he's already poisoned against it because of this guy Fox fetish, which is why I'll be dancing around his bedroom in a mask like that. (laughs) (laughs) Fully naked and erect. Just with with a guy Fox mask on. (laughs) Over your bed, you're going to wake up (laughs) with him looking down at you. uh, (laughs) But honestly, there is is some amazing acting being done, and it may not be... It's subtle. It, it may not be being done in uh, a, a loud and brash and incredibly politically correct way, but it is still magnificent acting being done here. I, I, that has a lot to do with the cinematography, obviously. Oh, yeah. and, and the cinematographer on that was Adrian Biddle. Now, a lot of people Adrian don't... Biddle, I've never heard of you before, but I fucking love it's you, It's going to fall on deaf ears because he's dead. Adrian Biddle, <laughs> you've biddled your last. <laughs> he know. passed away like three months before the release of the movie. No it was, shit. It was, it was his he last He didn't even film. get to see it succeed. No, but he's one of my favorite cinematographers. Oh, he's good. You're going to... here's a, He was a cinematographer on Aliens. Oh, yeah. Willow. Okay, yeah. Thelma and Louise. Okay. 1492 Conquest of Paradise. <sighs> Judge Dredd. This is another one of those great movies for everyone except for the main. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? Event Horizon. Wait, wait, what? Oh, Event Horizon. Uh, the Mummy yeah, 1 and good. 2. The Good Mummies. Yeah. The World is Not Enough. Mm-hmm. It was all right. And Reign of Fire, just to name a few. Yeah, it was a guilty pleasure. Those The cinematography was amazing with, with him at the helm. Those are great movies, and anyone that says they are, are horrible, like, cinematography... Oh, oh I would kick the, my, my problem with 1492 lay in the actors, not... not oh, yeah. No, 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 yeah. The, the actors, horrible. Like, Gerard Depardieu, I mean... As God, <laughs> talk about nightmare fuel that knows. Oh my God. <sighs> oh my God. My only movie, the only movie I've ever liked him, like really liked him in, was uh, one of the Musketeer movies that was done with him. It, but also had. Um... Let's just do all the Musketeer movies. No, no. I'm done. Actually, I think we talked about that. We doing all of do them. That. Fuck the rest of this shit. Wipe the slate. Let's. <laughs> I love Musketeer movies. Have Musketeers, Will Game. <laughs> no. Going to you three times no. a week. Oh, God. No. <laughs> no. We could do a side podcast where we just do nothing but watch the shows. Would you agree, despite the content, that this was well written, Nathaniel? No. Like, okay, the, are, the are you going because you know the, the graphic novel really well, or are you going because you just didn't like the script? I thought the script was because it deviates greatly from the graphic novel. The graphic novel is just a better story. It's it's just it's a better story. But yeah, the book movie, Dune is good too. But it's but, a movie. I mean, do what? you like? Do you like any part of it? Uh okay. Because uh, I I think you're 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 being liked, a little pedantic and unfair about this. I I I think you're just upset that I dislike one of your favorite movies. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, Damn. I thought I thought we were like yeah. this, man. Well, you know, we bonded over the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> we'll bond again. <laughs> and over our hatred of uh, Valerian. Well, I mean, that there is that. But I thought that everything was just so ham-fisted. It wasn't, like, a, even subtle. It was just straight up... Like, I love satire, and I love dystopian stories, and I love that kind of dark future. If you don't change your ways, things are going to go. This was so bad. This was ham-fisted. It was the Wachowskis just sort of punching you in the face and there's, with a political agenda. But there's you don't find any redeeming quality in how much of it is actually... Because this was all speculative at the time mm-hmm. this was written. How much of it has actually become what we're living right now. None of that redeems this movie to you in any way. None of it. It's just I mean, gone was, because of your Guy Fox fetish. I think it's... I mean, the... The narrative is pretty appropriate dealing with what we have today. But I don't what, what about good movie. what about uh, the the plan? Uh, it's not Prospero. It's the other guy. Uh, the the chairman. What's his name? Which the high name? chancellor? Oh, John Hurt's character. When he's describing <laughs> the steps he took to get into Sutler. power, Sutler. Thank you. Yeah, it was just one hundred percent analog of every corrupt politician. But it ever. hadn't happened yet, uh, yeah, and it was exactly it, what has just happened. It's mm-hmm. really, really sad that that has happened. That doesn't make me like the movie anymore. That just makes me hate today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, when... so <laughs> I, I, so he hates Nostradamus too. <laughs> Anyone exactly, else yeah. who's apparently who's, <laughs> like peered through the veil of the past to get to the future? We love you, Nostradamus. Nathaniel. Was a hack. We, we love oh, you. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. Take your it's a good thing this off. is empty because you're not getting any more. <laughs> All right. So the, the, the comic version, Alan Moore actually wrote, obviously, he did the graphic novel for this. 
if you haven't like had a chance to check out any of his graphic I novels. Wonder, I'm sorry, Dusty. I wonder if it's because I came to the graphic novel after the movie. What was your timeline on that? Graphic novel way earlier. That may be it, because I came That's to the movie first and earlier, then yeah. the graphic novel. You know, it depends. Uh, and I think it all depends upon production house writers and whatnot. This was barely V for Vendetta. Barely. Mm-hmm. Just basically in name and mask. That's it. The entire rest of the story might as well have been completely different. Like, yes, it was a faster regime. It was set yeah. in, the, in the 90s, I think. And the Well, V for Vendetta, the, the graphic novel was about Margaret Thatcher and yeah. everything that was going on in England at the time with Margaret yep. Thatcher. Um, and Alan Moore had his – he had actually had his name completely stricken from this movie. He didn't want any yeah. – no royalties, no nothing. You know, just like – you know, from hell and the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and later Watchmen that were that were ripped apart. That he hated. I don't being understand. Done. I don't understand why he hated Watchmen because the only the only thing changed in Watchmen was the alien sex scene at the end. Well, no, was the end of the movie was the was the destroyer the city the place wasn't destroyed by uh, aliens. It was like uh, they turned Doctor Manhattan into the weapon to make it more appropriate to modern audiences who weren't around in the 50s for the context that the watchman was built in so i get why they changed that but the entire rest of the movie was almost shot for shot from the comics do you like david lynch's dune i do actually but it has very little to do with the book it has a lot to do with the book. It's an interpretation of some of the Fremen ideals. An interpretation you say <laughs> yes as go you on. stroke the microphone go lovingly. on and it's also got good <laughs> actors with good writing that uh, hack john hurt yeah you're right good actors uh-huh yeah. go on that hack hugo weaving yep yeah. go on we know I you will are. break you <laughs> i'm just no. gonna turn this recording off <laughs> you know we didn't do this shit to dusty why are you guys doing it to me oh, okay, okay oh okay i was like damn he really did <laughs> This is unfair, guys. Well, I'm just, just looking oh, at we, Dune right we, there. We, we love you. And you know why. that, Nathan. This is all, this is all in good maybe fun. Maybe it's the tattoos. <laughs> I was just wondering how how, how you <laughs> like, got from one to the other because I it is it is rough for me that you don't like this. I really thought you would. I this is coming I think it's at also me a bit because from we left haven't field. been together for a few weeks. So, so. like We're... biblically, we haven't been together. <laughs> you know, I was face palming so hard throughout the movie. The uh, and it's funny because. In my twenties, I actually kind of liked the movie, and right. uh, the first time I saw it, and then when you get, well, then I went and saw it again after giving the novel, uh, the graphic novel, over you read, and hated it. It's like, oh god, why did I like this? But one of the things about the movie that I did like was Weaving's, and this is this is not in the book, was Weaving's whole v alliteration mm-hmm. speech. Oh, that was great at the beginning. I loved it. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was. I like that. I hated the Evie character. She was boring. There was nothing interesting about that character. She might as well have not even been there, and the story could have almost been the same. I didn't admire her, but I had empathy yeah. for her, which is a subtler emotion. But you know, in in a in a heroic kind of fantasy, you know, movie, you want you want to admire the the titular hero. Her uh, facial only expression got... didn't change the whole time, except when she was crying. Their entire rest oh, of the time, she cried so well. her facial expression was the same. I, I from think that to end. probably has something to do with Christian Haydenson from Star Wars, like burning into her and not being able to act. <laughs> she, she <laughs> was, was this, this was fresh after Star yeah, Oh, it God. Was, it was fresh after. Talk about Stockholm Hayden Syndrome, Christ- man. She had Hayden nothing Christensen, left. Yeah. Yeah. Hayden Christensen. <laughs> this was fresh after that. I think she was trying to redeem herself as actually being able to act. And I don't what think about, she did a good job. <laughs> all right. What about what about uh Delilah's death? That's the uh the, the old lady scientist. I didn't care. Really? We, oh, she was wow. just introduced five minutes before that. I She's thought that was incredibly powerful. That we've known for all of five minutes who is now suddenly dead. And I'm like, I don't care. Perhaps if they had been more hints, mm. if they had Again, this goes back to what you were complaining about, that whole story about that facility where they did all the research. Agreed. This just sort of appears halfway through the movie. You don't even know that word means nothing to you until her death, a character that you've never heard of. I just liked yeah. his empathy with killing her. I liked I liked the situation of it. I guess it was okay. It, his I mean it was a different <laughs> it was a different way of killing up until that point. Right. You'd only ever see him seen him be violent. Yeah. But 
she was the worst one. I know. Why did he? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Given his intense feelings of vengeance, uh-huh. the fact that she was the one who was responsible for this and possibly in some ways even responsible for the entire regime existing. And he's just like, okay, I'm going to let you die, but I'm going to kill all these other fuckers. I think it was because it was a woman. I think it was hmm. because of her post actions. She was still working as like a doctor in a personal redemption attempt. I guess. I mean, she was not at the forefront of the oppressive regime. That's true. She did apologize. Yeah, so and, and and I I really like Which that. Carries uh, weight. It really does. Yeah. Like when she asks, "Is it is it meaningless to apologize?" and he says, "Never." Right as the poison takes takes hold. I think that's fucking beautiful. It was okay. Yeah, I can, I can go with that. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I didn't hate that scene, but I didn't feel sad because I had no sad connection. wasn't what I was going for. I just I okay. I felt. I felt that it was a, a, a well-crafted thing. If if you were looking at that scene from a bubble without a movie around it, it would have been stunning. If two actors walked in on a dark stage and just did that, and then the curtain fell, that would have been gorgeous. By itself, that could have actually been a nice little short film. Yeah. yeah. And and it was, I, I thought it was the my favorite piece of the movie. Hmm. It was fantastic. I can see that. Yeah. It was good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, it was directed by James Mateague, uh, who is also known for the inv- movies I've never sat down to watch. Uh, the Invasion, Ninja Assassin, uh, and several episodes of Sense8. But this was his first, this was his directorial debut. So it kind of, he knocked it out of the park for a first, you know, for a first uh, attempt at a big box office hit. I think. I know you're going to disagree, Nathaniel, because there's not much that you do like about it, but and that's well, fine. Again, no, it's, I mean, I that, hated Nightbreed, and I, I don't was, have any opinion on the director. No, no, not, neither no. do I. Um, I mean, he, he didn't he, write it. He well, the Wachowskis took it from Alan Moore, as we we start talking about. And Alan Moore was like, "Fuck you guys! I don't want my name on this because they completely rewrote it." It was like in the late goddamn right in the late eighties. They they actually wrote a script for it, and it got shelved because they didn't have any kind of clout in in Hollywood. And then fast forward to after the Matrix, they took it off the shelves and they said, hey, let's revamp this. And they uh, sat down and rewrote it uh, and they came out with what they have. The Wachowskis, uh, obviously, of the Matrix fame as well as Speed Racer and then the Netflix series Sense8, which was recently which canceled. I loved. Um, I really liked when the uh, when the, the V-clad uh, protesters were intermingling with the troops mm-hmm. at that last rush yeah that was that was good yeah i I, think I liked that scene more the first time i saw it in hindsight i hate that scene probably more than any other scene in the movie hmm. to tell well and it's entirely due to my personal bias against the goddamn guy fox mask <laughs> which is now <laughs> in, they're everywhere <laughs> in the years <laughs> since all of these all these anarchists who think they're so smart and so clever all buy this fucking guy fox mask. Beyond, the problem is beyond anonymous. Who are you talking about? Mostly the general anonymous because it's not like but Antifa, it's, mostly, it's not any of those it, folks. It, who is it's it? It's anarchists. It's it's straight up anarchists who go to these protests to to cause chaos. They usually well at least the trend has died down, but at least in the years following this movie, that was the thing to do. Yeah. Like, you were wore a Guy Fox mask. I mean, Anonymous has survived yep. on that to this day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They but have. as for the rest of it, I never really realized that's a thing, and I've been relatively political, like, politically it, active. It spread beyond Anonymous. Mm. Yeah. It was just, it just, it was just annoying, and it makes me grumpy. People get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think one of my favorite scenes was the uh, the shootout scene towards the end, where you had the the you know you had the uh, Oh, what was his name? Um, Creedy and his goons, where they were all lined up and they were shooting it at V. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, now it's my turn. Uh, that scene, I think, was probably one of my favorite scenes. Um, I love that he took damage. Yeah. That he didn't just I mean, stand he there. Through the, for the, through the mask. Yeah. You see the blood dripping through the mask. And that was great. That was one of the things I liked about this. What I think separates him from a black cloak is the fact that he was hurt. He was, he was badly hurt. Bad. Bad. He, he was, was killed. Only, he was only... The strength of his rage he was carried only hurt. him through. He was only killed because the story deemed him to be killed at that moment. 
Like he every, survived. That's how every story did, that, works. That ever. whole fight didn't that's slow him based down. On the right. It, all, it, it slowed him way down. Yeah, he stumbled back for God's sake and died at her feet. He killed every single person exactly like he said he would before they could. But he's also been experimented on, so he does have that reserve. Wait, wait, wait. here's a question. I, I think, I think he's not talking about the superhero aspects. I I think he's talking about the writing. Have you ever been truly furious? Like filled with rage and power furious. And I have to ask you this and you can cut it later. But no, 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 honestly, like in your personal life, have you ever witnessed something that made you so angry oh, yeah. that you were filled with basically adrenaline at that time. Yeah. So how is that unrealistic? A woman will get out of a car crash I never and flip said a unrealistic. car. Oh, well, I'm sorry. What were you saying? That you just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Oh, okay. You were saying, oh, he took damage. He did this. He didn't really take any damage. He just suddenly spontaneously manifested blood when the story deemed him to. It was <laughs> like... He Let's was... never watch Fantastic Four with him or any other X Men movie ever. Oh, we'll never watch the Fantastic Four because they're the worst. They, they really, well, I mean, not Hulk worst, but pretty worst. Oh. You're right. I just don't like supers. He's basically a super. Yeah, you've mentioned that before. Yep. Yeah, that's that's odd because I I feel the same way. I think I think him rising from the masses to accomplish this thing would have been better as well. Like yeah. maybe maybe wronged by the state, family thing, some sort of file off the serial numbers and move it across state lines origin story i agree i did yeah. not like the uh i want to say arkham but it's not arkham it's arkham it's, let's just call it's it arkham. lark hill yeah, yeah. Lark yeah. Hill. that was useless to me yeah. i didn't think that was necessary well i i, I want to say something real quick circling there's a technical thing that i really like about yeah? that scene also that i was making mention about when the uh, when that film was then that scene was filmed the stuntmen involved they literally had moved in slow motion while filming the scene. Oh, really? So that wasn't a high-speed camera. No. That was them going... Whoa. Yeah, they moved in slow motion while uh, the Hugo Weaving stunt double, David, uh, I'm going to butcher this last name, Leach, I think, L-E-I-T-C-H, uh, he moved in real time. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that made it seem like he was moving much faster than the, the rest of the secret police. It was also shot at 60 frames per second to slow really? the fingermen down That's even it? more. Yeah. I mean, because even in 04, Four, they could get to like eleven thousand. Oh yeah, I know, but this was filmed at 60, 60 frames per second. So he didn't. They had. A oh stunt, my god, that's awful. They had a. <laughs> that's the rum, right? <laughs> they had a stunt double for a guy in a mask. Yes. Shh! Don't look at it too closely. <laughs> Why was he even fucking there? Like, <laughs> but I just, I, I other than the scene, been David Prowse. Visually, the scene, other, visually the scene. Tell I mean, it to I, Vader. I liked it. Oh, <laughs> visually, I liked the scene story wise. But on the technical side, I liked that whole thing that that they didn't use a lot of tricks on that. He just they the stunt the stuntmen involved literally slowed down and did slow motion themselves physically. To do the scene. That blood was horrible. That was bad blood. Oh, the, it was the, bad blood. Sadly, yeah. the yeah. CG did not stand up. No, it, was terrible. it did not. I, I think a better origin story would have been for him to do 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 pull-ups, and run five kilometers every day. Yeah. And While envisioning be... the wrong things that yeah. had been done to him by the fascist <laughs> state. Yeah. No, uh, that's common ground. That I can agree with. And that's a one-punch man reference, by the way. Oh. Well, I haven't seen that. But. I think having something like that. God, having, don't sip it. Just slug it. That's I awful. Do. It's awful. I, having some kind of a common ground, but he was just some nameless super soldier that I, again, I didn't care about him. Yeah. Like, it was, he, oh, he didn't even have a background. No. Cause he had forgotten it. How convenient. It's it, a lot of people have compared this movie as like a blueprint to social insurrection. And I disagree because he is a super. Mm hmm. And I think that they missed a very good chance to say, I mean, cause they took, they pulled no punches on the rest of it. Yeah. I think they missed a very good chance to make him an average Joe who just thought ahead, planned and did his thing. Or even equilibrium. Christian Bale, that movie. Like, you haven't seen it? No. It's same. basically the same movie, no. but instead of a masked vendetta dude, he's a cop. Who's really good with I dis- guns? I disagree. Yeah. I disagree, and I think I think Equilibrium, as much hype and as as much of a cult following. I, I like the movie. I'm gonna let me preface that. It's not that good. It's not. He's got a better movie. hero. It's I I, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think it has a better hero. I don't think it's that good of a, a story. I mean, I like the movie, but it's. Eh. 
And unfortunately, uh, I, it came out around the same time as The Matrix, so people labeled it as a Matrix ripoff. When it wasn't, it was a completely different story. Yeah, but completely different story. But it in a universe where words like fam are taking hold, like I just what? fam, fam, like family, fam. Yeah. Okay, I, I I do love alliterate alliteration movie. I I think it's incredibly important yeah. mm-hmm. to our shared social consciousness of what words are, and that's a theme that echoes through this entire movie oh, of, yeah. of words being immortality, words being power, words mm-hmm. and thoughts being the only thing you can't take from a person. There's a whole thing behind the scenes of this movie with the letter V, if you like really notice going through the whole movie. What? You mean where he speaks about it for five minutes? No, 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 not, not that. Well, there is that <laughs> introductory monologue. Yeah, it was super subtle, but I think yeah. I caught it. Um, I have some of them if you'd like to hear them. Uh, top ten. There is ten anyways. Give me. Uh, well, there's that introductory monologue. Yes. Okay. Uh, v notes that Evie's name is special, pronouncing it as E V e is the fifth letter of the alphabet, and V is Latin for five. Uh, v is held in the Lark Hill cell number V Latin for five. Yeah. Well, that was obvious. The phrase on V's mirror, which is uh, V very uh, venersum vicious Vicky. By you the power summon the ancient evil. Exactly, yes. Thing. <laughs> By the power of truth, I, a living man, have conquered the universe. Uh, the scar on Evie's forehead in the shape of a sideways V. Uh, in a dance with Evie, the song V chooses is number five on his jukebox, if you look closely. Um, there's also, when V confronts Creedy in his house, he plays Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The film's title itself is a reference for V for Victory, obviously. After the battle, when V is mortally wounded, he leaves a V signature of his own blood. Mm-hmm. When the group of V's marches, Big Ben shows the time at 11.05, making a V on the clock face. Uh, 11.05 is also the month and day of the format of 5th of November. And the destruction of Old Bailey in Parliament results in a display of fireworks which form the letter V. Yeah. I didn't like the fireworks. No. Fireworks thought... were bad. Yeah. 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 And, and not just from a CG not standing up point, but just... Okay, so you blew up a building. How did you manage the fight? Come on now. How did he blow up the entire parliament building with that one train? Uh, parliament is actually still heated by gas. Okay. All he had to do was ignite the line. Those were not gas explosions. Those were bomb explosions. And was fireworks dynamite. coming out of everything? That's the part that I yeah. didn't yeah. like. I was like, <laughs> the, come on. Those I mean, were, is it on a building in the and, back and, that he had set up on a seismic the train, timer? Maybe. Like, no, the train's gone, man. No fuses uh, are going to work. Yeah. So it was and then clearly, you have to shoot up through the rubble. Oh, that, but it I, did everything in like a queer, perfectly, beautifully timed demolition. It's a move. No, no, no. I, I, I hey, get man. That. <laughs> if it's, if it's supposed to represent a thing, but clearly it was I a demolition. Know, I know. Like, yeah. I, um, the, only, the only way I thought my way around it is he planted it on a building behind it possible uh, with some sort of timer that's giving a reach yeah yeah but... personally i didn't like it i didn't like that part there no, was sir. there is a, a part i did not yeah. like yeah no, I'm, I'm 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 glad like. that they they hugo weaving went in and redubbed all his entire script through the whole movie they initially put a microphone in his hairline for the wig and then one inside the mask but it was not working so they took it all off, let him do his do everything, and then after yeah. everything was said and done, they went back into the studio and they completely dubbed his entire script once again. Which, I mean, there's a mask on, so it's easy. Yeah, how do they match the lip movements? <laughs> I got to say, the, the concept, and this was uh, basically when, you know, the whole kerfluffle of Fox News first mm-hmm. came around, that the concept of Fox Nation is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We're basically living it right now. And not us. We're on the West Coast. We're fine. But <laughs> I mean, just True. just this dystopian future done by ourselves and done out of fear. Oh yeah, resonates more now than it's when frightening it, when it we when it was at, released. We laughed at it then because uh, no, we didn't because we we, we were in okay, Bush one point zero and Rush Limbaugh was still relevant. It, it was a very scary movie at the time, yeah, this was but it's heavily, more scary now. Heavily focused in George Bush, American politics. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the reasons why Alan Moore didn't want yeah. anything to do with it, because it took away the Margaret Thatcher aspect and Hollywoodized Bush. Yeah. And that's why he was like, screw you guys. I'm going home. I don't want anything for this. I don't want my name anywhere near it. I don't want any money for it. F off. But interestingly enough, the first person that had a crack at writing the script... Uh, Hillary Henkin, who wrote 
we talked about this and made fun of it last time. Roadhouse. Roadhouse! <laughs> <laughs> and Romeo is Bleeding had written an early adaptation of the graphic novel, uh, which was apparently singled out as one of Hollywood's best unproduced scripts in a 1993 LA Times article. And it was described as a wild, over-the-top saga, a cross between Les Mis and a clockwork orange. That actually sounds a lot like the comic book. Yeah. Hmm. There's a great line in this movie. Which well, There's a lot of great lines in this movie. A revolution without dancing is a revolution not worth having. That's a good line. <laughs> that, that is, is a good, good line. line. Yeah. There are a lot what else of really you got for lines. us, Dusty? Well, we pretty much went over most of my little, like, Nathaniel was seething over all my, my historical... <laughs> <laughs> tidbits into this and that's you know Nathaniel, that, no, that's I, actually I just, great because... I just want to say this is okay it's okay that you don't agree with me mm-hmm. I mean it, it doesn't make you less wrong but it, that it's okay that you believe wrong things I just want you to know that <laughs> <laughs> he's glaring in both I, I don't know if that's glaring or if that's and... the straw that broke the camel's back I'm not sure what's happening well it's what there. four shots of of old granddad and and then half a shot of your piss poor rum <laughs> I like my piss poor rum. This is pretty terrible. I know, but I like it. Uh, This does tie into one of my favorite books, The Count of Monte Cristo. Now, the book, yes, the book is great. Many, many many ways. And I actually like the the movie version that was done in, what, like 2000 um, uh, of The Count of Monte Cristo, Uh, even though it's a very condensed version, but it is one of my favorite movies. I mean, obviously, there are parallels to The Count of Monte Cristo in this, but uh, I like... The comparison mostly between V and Edmund Dantes, that's the biggest thing that I like. Because in both stories, the hero escapes an unjust and traumatic imprisonment and then spends fucking decades trying to take vengeance on his oppressors under a new persona. So, yeah, I I mean, it's it's, it's, it's explicit in portraying v is the this embodiment of an idea rather than an an individual well it's it's not it's not even an idea it's 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 words and i i think Some i think that, that's valid i mean he's like that you can't kill an idea and i'll, I'll agree with nathaniel on this it is heavy-handed mm-hmm. but it doesn't make it less true true and um i i love the oh, the underlying concept throughout the whole movie of ideas and words having power mm-hmm. and not being killable because when you live in a totalitarian fascist state, you don't have much else. No. So ideas lead to deeds. But the problem for me is that I don't, if I watch a dystopian story, I don't want a happy ending. Because a happy ending makes you forget about what you saw. The unwashed masses go and they pay their money and they go see a movie like this. And it's so over the top. But they only care about the action because all of the message is sort of lost what they come out with that is hugo weaving has a good voice natalie portman's hot and shit blew up I don't, happy ending yay i don't think it necessarily was has a happy ending well good thing that's not us here in america right because <laughs> yeah, those brits well you know fuck them but they got they got the taken care of i guess we, this is you what know happens what? when we you have socialized problems. medicine <laughs> we got some problems we blow them up you know drop some nukes on them It'll be good <laughs> This you walk out of this movie and you can feel good because there was a happy ending. I don't the, the, again. The, I don't the, think there was a happy the, ending. The police stood down. The protesters got up. The people rose up. Everything blew up. Woo, America! Seriously, it's it's not a really. I'm not with not him a, on this. Are you? Not a good no, dystopian. I'm not. No. <laughs> it's, I, think it's it was, not, it was I don't a, think it's it was, dystopian. I think it's prophetic. It was. Well, I think it was a bit of both, but it's definitely a dystopia. I mean, Mad future. Max is dystopia. No, yeah. Mad Max is post-apocalypse. Uh, well, dystopia is something like... Gattaca Snowpier- is dystopia. Gattaca How's that? Snowpiercer okay. would be... Snow- dystopia. Post-apocalypse. Yeah. Mm. Snowpiercer's a fucking but- apocalypse. <laughs> 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 but but I, 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 I would say that this is less of that and more of current events, sadly. At the time, this was a dystopian future film, mm. and it technically still is because it still takes place far in the future. No, technically you're right. Even, even though the comic think... book was not written in that point, you're right. No. Talking about the movie. Yeah. If we're going to talk about the comic book, we should stop no, this and I can start just... saying good things. <laughs> stop talking about it. Let's not talk about the comic and, book. And I, I will agree with you. The comic book is fantastic. Uh-huh. I don't particularly like the art, but the writing is... Yeah, oh, I personally so thought good. the art was kind of crap. It, no, it wasn't crap. It was just I okay. I just didn't like the style you know? for it. It was just me. okay. But the writing of of the graphic novel. Oh, Alan Moore was is amazing. amazing. It was great. 
I thought all the characters were more nuanced. They had more interesting and personalities. And I'll, I'll join you this far yeah. on, on your side of the fence. I will say that it is a better story than the movie. But we're not have comic books, will game. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I really which I'm, be I'm down podcast. to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to go off on the ethics of the Punisher for a while. That would be but... fun. <laughs> <laughs> we could do the that Dolph movie <laughs> version, or no? Yeah. God, no! <laughs> Bite your tongue, sir. <laughs> you know, it's funny that because uh, ever since we had Bassam and Cranny on the show, I've been listening to their podcast, and I've been listening specifically I've wanted, I've, to I've, as there's many cereals the... left. You know, what? I mean, there's there's Ducktales and. Yeah, TMNT. But, but I've been also listening to specifically the ones about because they in our episode of the Ninja Turtles we had this aside where they were talking about how Casey Jones isn't what you remember him. <laughs> oh, agreed. Yeah. So listening to other episodes about Casey Jones is hilarious, and essentially, yeah, he's like the freaking Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did this guy get on TV in a children's show? <laughs> Fuck the Punisher has been in the Marvel Universe cartoons. In his little spandex suit and his thick back hair, that Punisher, not not yeah. the not the new PTSD Punisher from Daredevil, but that was good. Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't think this is a good uh, dystopian story. I think it tried to be, but I think the again in Wachowski fashion, they close everything out with a nice bow on top, and it. I think if they, you know, I think if what if the I think it would have been better. If they hadn't collapsed the government, I think if it was the protesters had smart. been killed. If something like that had happened, if the military had been like, oh, well, fuck these guys, and just filled the crowd with bullets, and there had actually been something truly dystopian to happen. Well, that, that doesn't have anything to do. I don't think that has anything to do with the Wachowskis or the writers or, or no, that. They're the writers. That has, no, that has more to do with the production company going. We don't want that to be shown, so we need you because we're fronting you fifty five million dollars to do this movie. You're going to write the script the way we want it to. I don't if know. not that that happens you're gonna, a lot, but you're it's the get, Wachowskis. They didn't have any clout I mean they had what, the Matrix. They had the they Matrix. Had one. They one were, clout at that they, point in time. They were hot shit at the time. The Matrix. The Matrix now, was a big deal. I understand that, yeah. but it would not enough to carry into like Go it redeemed Keanu Reeves, want. and that, oh, that yeah. was hard to do yeah. at the time. That I mean I'm sorry. I think Keanu Reeves has been a good you actor. You do now. No, I've always thought Keanu Reeves is a good actor. Really? Yes. Really? I've always liked him. Fuck you. Yes, I have. I really yes. That, you I don't know. I, I Keanu has grown into it. Yeah. He, he was has, not a but good I've actor always, at all since times. Bill and Ted, I have liked him as an actor. Okay. The Wachowskis. <laughs> I'm picking on him today, but you're next week. <laughs> the, I'm coming I'm after you. I'm, the we, Wachowskis' we need name was synonymous with dollar bills at that time. Yeah. Like, they, they could literally they, do no wrong. They could and they literally did everything poop on a sheet of paper after and make a movie out of it. The Matrix. Yeah. Matrix 2 was horrible. Matrix 3 was horrible. And they made a shitload of money. Speed Racer was good and the only reason was, the only reason speed racer was good was because of all the fucking psychedelic uh graphics I think you're that were talking about it. this from a movie fan standpoint from the time have movies will game i know <laughs> from from a meta standpoint the wachowskis at that after the matrix hollywood thought the wachowskis could do no wrong and, and i didn't need even even and, need to see matrix two or three yeah. they didn't need to go and do two more well again, i liked the mech damn it again that's movie opinions but opinions of reality was that hollywood basically Worship the Wachowskis at that time. Can we do Pacific Rim? I'm fine I with really that. Would love yeah, to do let's that do movie. Pacific Rim. Maybe that's we'll what we'll the, all like. We'll put, we know what we'll put that in, in instead of uh, the one where we took said we were gonna have to take one out. Yeah, let's 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 ditch Christmas. Yeah, and and Christmas. 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 Christmas story. <laughs> so and do a okay. Pacific Rim. We have rambled Job. on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that being said, I, th- I think it's all good. Um, I, I I wanted I wanted to to speak to you one last time before we move into your segment. And I understand all, all, all hipstery tight, tight pants jokes aside. I get where you're coming from, but I, I still think that there's enough kernels in this movie to make it a good movie. There's enough moments when if, if you take the things you don't like aside that you can find a lot of good in it. I agree. I completely and agree. I think that there were good elements, but I would not say it was a good movie. Okay. I got nothing. I've, I've, yeah, I, I've I've ran this one back and forth enough. So yeah, I lo- I love this movie. I love the shit out of it. I think it's a fantastic movie. I yeah, I yeah. think it's great. Also, yeah. I mean there are, there are things that don't hold up te- technologically wise. Te- I think I said that right. 
on the technological side, yeah. there are things that don't hold up. So like some of the CG doesn't. But it's in my opinion, it's it's well written. It's beautifully shot in a lot of scenes. Mm. Uh I disagree that the card the characters are cardboard. I think they have some decent depth to them. Maybe not the Psalm Villains, Abyss. Not so much, they're but... not the Psalm Abyss deep, but they don't know deep. what that Psalm Abyss? The Psalm, the Psalm Abyss is in the North Atlantic. It's near where the Titanic sank. It's a deep spot in the ocean. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a, almost like a. I thought he was down. referencing a movie too. No, okay. no, no, no. S O H M, the Psalm Abyss. Um, it's not that deep. Well, but... I'm from Alabama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got a mud pit in my backyard. It's pretty deep. <laughs> This movie floats in my mud pit, though. It ain't that deep. <laughs> All right. Let's let's go ahead and take a break. Okay. When we come back, we'll, uh, Nathaniel will lead us into how he would game this movie. Atrocity of a movie. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was go, I was like preempting what you were saying. All right. Let's take a break. All right. Hello, listeners. This is Dusty. Thank you for checking in. And I am your co-host with arguably the better voice out of the three of us. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store where they have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board games, card, mini, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and swag. And if you're over 21, have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. They have a fantastic and incredibly knowledgeable staff and they are the hub of a very diverse and friendly gaming community. Check out Guardian Games when you can. You will not be disappointed. And thanks for listening. And we are back from our break, bum, ready bum, to bum. talk about gaming. Was it a bum bum bum, bum time, Dusty? It's always a bum bum bum, bum time. You got to save those for special occasions. I only do it when I come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or God, I have this like a mental yeah. picture in my head of you like standing there like a Superman pose. Standing? Like, How do you think I fuck? I'm fucking fat. <laughs> no, you, you think just... I stand? <laughs> no, like standing up when you're done and be like, this arms, is not a vertical exercise, arms, man. <laughs> arms like on your hips, just like standing like Superman. Bum, 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 bum. All right, now I have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, special occasions. <laughs> So we're back to talk about some gaming about this movie that <laughs> I'm everybody sorry. knows. I mean, you, you think me <laughs> orgasming in a Superman onesie is a special occasion. Oh. It happens more often than you might think. <laughs> we should keep that in, too, no. because that's beautiful. <laughs> I got my pockets full of kryptonite, yeah. <laughs> it makes me last longer. The kryptonite? Just put that right in there. Just get it. Just, and I even just... brought the spin doctors back. I'm so pleased with myself. <laughs> Please, carry on. Carry on. I'm so sorry, Nathaniel. <laughs> I think this podcast is done for the night. I think I think <laughs> no. that's that's as far as this oh, goes. Oh, Nathaniel has more. We're good. You know what? You're on a roll, Matthew. I'm just going <laughs> to immediately turn this over to you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Do uh, you want me to do the gaming thing? Yeah, do yes. it right okay. now. So I have a campaign, and I, I think it's... I think Nathaniel might agree that it has more immediacy for people who feel Nathaniel's way about the movie than people who feel my way about the movie. And my way. And, yeah, yeah, and, and Dusty. I, I, th- I think you might like this. So, um, I call this, uh, campaign hook Finger Man. Finger bang bang. You <laughs> With a uh, Superman onesie. Wh- oh, whenever possible. <laughs> I mean, I prefer underdog, you know. Oh, well, that, that's, wow. That's that, self explanatory. That, that right there, that's underdog. a bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while the Chancellor and his immediate cabinet have been killed and Parliament blown up, there remains a vast network of the fascist state that needs to be dismantled. So, uh, you, uh, the PC, are an average citizen of England dealing with the events immediately following the movie. You and your neighbors took part in the March on Parliament. Man, you suck at charades. What, what <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm listening. I just wanted to look. All right. Uh, you and your neighbors took part in the, the March on Parliament. Uh, you faced the guns of the soldiers and marched on. You saw the explosion of Parliament with your own eyes. You went home. You talked to your neighbors in the streets about what you saw. You stayed out long past the old curfew, like reveling in your new freedom to to stay out. Your neighborhood fingermen, five in total, told you to disperse. You and your neighbors, fresh off your victory, refused. You fought. You won. 
With the other PCs, who will be your neighbors in this, you're going to be a neighborhood unit. You picked up the weapons that the Fingerman dropped. If you search, in the leader's pocket is a business card with his bosses, the head Fingerman for that district's name and telephone number. It's time to get a little of your own back. Mm -hmm. It's time to seek a little revenge. Uh, The PCs can trace the chain of command up until they start meeting organized resistance. As fingermen start dropping as the apparat of the old regime is destroyed, they will start banding together to fight the citizens coming after them. So the battles will get bigger and bigger and more and more organized as you work your way up the chain of the fingermen command. Okay. Um. They'll start banding together to uh, resist the incursions of the people who used to be their, their, their sheep, the people they impressed. If the PCs survive the large clash, and I think there should be at least one large clash, perhaps at a central office of the Fingermen, okay. some, something of, of their bureau, the chief Fingerman, uh, on his body or in his office, they will find information leading to a black site where the political prisoners of the former regime are being held. Will the PCs stage a raid to free them? What is the media doing in this time? Because the media was also an apparatus of the government. Um, So you can take this basic idea of working up through a neighborhood to becoming an organized unit, seeking to take down what remains of of a fallen regime. Because just because you kill the leaders, that doesn't mean it's gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're not free and clear and, oh, happy day. It's rice and fucking, you know, cake for everybody. There is a lot of holdover. Uh, There's going to be a police station, which is still operating under old rules until new ones are passed down. There's going to be a military, which is effectively without a commander in chief. The media, of course. Um, You notice that there was rationing going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't see a need for rationing beyond control of the population. So, I mean, an organized neighborhood could work its way up to dictate what this new country, this newly freed country is going to become. And I think that would be an amazing long-term multi-year campaign. That could be fun. And that's what I have. It starts, of course, with fighting the local, the local bad boys in your neighborhood, the mm-hmm. Fingermen. But after you go on to uh, free the political prisoners, what, how you, that's presented to the media will actually take you into the realm of heroes and possible political leaders for the future. There's a lot of things that are, are targeted if you're looking to change. There is, of course, the Fingerman organization, the media of the state, which either has to be co-opted or destroyed and replaced, um, and, of course, the political prisoners to be freed. Mm-hmm. And I think this would make a fascinating multi-year campaign. And it just starts out with normal people. Sounds good. Who are told to I go like back it. inside, and they're like, fucking make me. And that's what I got. That's fascinating. I was not even thinking of that aspect. Again, and this is why I'm really glad that you started doing this segment. Because yeah, I think you adding it is gold. I, I, I like that you've added this over, over what the you lot just of episodes. What you described is the 90s political punk rock RPG Underground. I never heard of it. I haven't thought of that game in years, but that's it. Like, nice. you complete with a build out and expand your neighborhood mechanic into, oh really yeah nice it is the the dystopian 1990s dark future role-playing game can't believe i didn't even think about that i think it would be I interesting the entire series you could somewhere. use google maps for this you could use google maps yeah. for this entire oh yeah definitely my so i was not inspired by this movie so it was really difficult for me to come up with something so i, I kind of crap shot and my take is not going to be fun so let's talk about this movie's themes what's gameable from what you saw in this movie what's actually gameable because i mean it's not a party clearly not There's... not in the movie form no i had yeah. to work to get that you, you had to work <laughs> to get that yeah yeah i mean because the 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 gm is going to be v pretty much no no no, no v, v so? the the resistance is the theme of the game okay the resistance um, but it would only work with one player as written in the movie. Yeah. Possibly two. I mean, but I, I always like to take my hook that I write to be immediately after the movie. Okay. Essentially, you kind of gotta. Yeah. I mean, either that or, or something just inspired by it or it. parallel. Yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, having, when, when, when taking inspiration from a movie for a game, very rarely have actually almost net. 
I don't think I've ever looked at a movie <laughs> or a TV show and thought, I want to play that out beat for beat. No. Now, there are some really funny web comics that do that. The D- Dungeon, or is it the uh, DM of the Rings is one, which is which takes the Lord of the Rings movies shot by shot and then plays them out in a comic book like it's a D and D game. Oh, okay. I've seen a Star Wars one. And for there's that. a Star yeah. Wars one, Darths and Droids. Yeah, it starts from episode the, one and goes episode one and goes all the way up. That sounds horrific. It is. It's awesome. Hilarious. <laughs> Because you're reading it as the players playing the characters, making the dumbest possible choices. <laughs> um, at one point in the Lord of the Rings series, when uh, uh, so, so they, when the hobbits leave the party, when Frodo and Sam are like going off to, uh-huh. to separate, they explain it in the comic as their players are getting tired of the game and decided they're going to go join this other group that's going to go play Star Wars. That's when the Darth <laughs> Android comics begins. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, we're not really digging this anymore. Characters are just a little underpowered next to, you know, the elf and the dwarf and Aragorn over here. So we're just going to go play some Star Wars. Anyway, I digress. I've never taken inspiration from a movie to the point that it's literally. So usually it's like, do I want a game in that world? Or do I want to make a character based on that guy? Even in my most hyper-metabolic self masturbatory teenage gaming years even mid middle school i don't think i ever imagined myself playing a character as over the top badass as v that's just a little too much i was just never i was never that lame i never had that power trip oh, i've been that on. lame <laughs> <laughs> i've been like three different kinds of that lame i but you have to have powerful villains to work that against otherwise it's you know Otherwise, it has to work in stages. Otherwise, it's exactly like it was in the movie, and he cheesed through everything and actually had no conflict, except at the end. And even then, he won. No, it's just a scratch. I, I have mean, no comment on that, Senator. He was the unstoppable badass. He was Drizzt mm. <laughs> Like He was <laughs> Dark Elf Ranger with two sharp blades. Might as well have had a pet <laughs> panther. He was... Dritzed. Yeah, Dritzed. Yep. <laughs> so, this movie did not inspire me. Clearly, obviously, we've had this conversation all night, but I like your take on it, Matthew. My initial bringing, or uh, blah, sorry, my words here. My initial take was to just pitch Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds is something that I could easily see building any of those characters in. Like V would be a legendary build character yeah. with a crap load of experience points. While uh, Evie would simply be Evie would be kind of the everyman. I mean, there's there's really three characters. I might be able to identify as playable here. Uh, v, Evie, and Finch. Yeah. They're the ones that have the most yeah, action. Yeah, Finch could be playable. They're the easily. ones that follow the most leads. Uh, they have the most scenes. They do the most things. So I guess they would technically be considered the heroes. If we were to build a story like this from multiple perspectives at the same time, uh, I think I could also do it with uh, War of Darkness or Unknown Armies or any kind, anyone that that encourages a non-party based game. Yeah. It's if, more fun for a party though. It is more fun for a party. It keeps everybody involved. And What's that one you were talking about? Is it on your shelf? I do not have the books of Underground. Huh. I did not even think about it until you read that aloud. And boom, Underground. You just described it and it's perfect. But the truth is I was so uninspired by this movie that I was just like I just got to pick something generic and go with it and hope it doesn't get voted on. <laughs> <laughs> see the, my problem is, is that i i think it would be a lot of fun to pursue criminals through government i think that would be a fantastic game that's not a dark sorcerer with a princess mm. that's not uh the end of the world that's just that's just improving your own life as a citizen and i think that would be a very interesting game and a very thought-provoking game i can see that yeah I do like the concept of fighting your way up the ladder. Yeah. That's very double dragon. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not only that, but I mean, uh, unless you're old money from a family of politics, that's how you start. You see an injustice and you go about looking to fix it. That's how you end up in politics unless you come from an old money political family is you have a cause and you go for it. And I, I like the subtext that as these people, the, the players are cleaning up their country they are becoming what the country is going to become. And that could be, and that can be dangerous too. But oh yeah, it can. 
but that's what makes it a good story. No, no, I agree <laughs> with you completely. We could also use the Mistborn adventure game. I just realized that V for Vendetta, the movie, is Mistborn. Basically, without the magic. Yeah. Basically, Mistborn. Complete with... You were so angry at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mistborn... Where's the book on the table, motherfucker? Mist- Mistborn <laughs> is an amazing book, series of books, by Brandon A. Sanderson. And uh, some may know him as the person who took over when Robert Jordan kicked the bucket. Mm-hmm. The Wheel of Time series. Sanderson finished yeah, it. it. I, 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 I share that same shrug and yeah. eh that you just gave. I actually feel the same, but that's where he... A lot of yeah. people... He got a lot of acclaim f- from finishing I, I, I just never books. was able to engage with Jordan. I was never able to engage. I didn't finish the first book. Yeah. I got yeah. halfway through, and it's like, I don't I care. know there are anyway, people yeah, that just love it, but... but uh, Mistborn, the first book, uh, The Final Emperor, or The Final Empire, I think is what it's called, is almost scene for scene, this movie, in a magical world. But the same premise, you know, this oppressive, uh, dystopian empire ruling over these people treating them like trash stealing them killing them raping them whatever they want to do and then from out of nowhere comes this weird hero this masked hero who comes around and bothers to fight them dies in the end and inspires the hero young heroic woman to uh become his protege and move forward it's it's almost the same thing i thought about going in that and leading a revolution with her her tail and her lieutenants but then the party wouldn't be equal you know, it would be a leader and henchmen. And, yeah. Underlings. Which wouldn't, be, I don't think it would be as fun. Probably not. Yeah. I don't think she would want to be a leader, but either way, yeah. She, I, I wouldn't want to play I don't think she's interesting enough to be a player yeah. character. Yeah. <laughs> and something like this, if we were to take your story, I think it would be more interesting if everybody made their own characters. Yeah. What are you? I'm a fucking baker while well, I'm in IT, while well, I'm in yeah. this, that, or the other. And they had some reason to yeah. be in the fight other than. That I mean, or they're a rugby the movie, team or something. You in know? the movie, it's clear through the people's reactions when they were watching TV that they weren't happy. No, mm-hmm. no, yeah, it was very clear. Yeah. Sitting in the bar, they weren't happy. In the diner, they weren't happy. It's just, but they had to go along with it. They had to go with yeah. the status quo until someone said something. Yeah. So, which would you recommend? I don't know any of these. So or did you the want? Deal. Do you want to go with I, the one that matched? Or is the this going to be a short, sh- very short side of the gaming? Well, that's, that's okay. We have a lot of the movie one. We I have mean, a lot of the yeah. movie. We we can there. There's there's gonna be stinkers sometimes. <laughs> Too bad we Night haven't Breed. hit it yet. <laughs> Nightbreed was Palladium, and you shut your mouth. <laughs> no, I'm just the movie itself stinker. No, but uh, so here's the deal. I am not equipped to talk about Underground right now. I haven't played it since the '90s. It had a brief resurgence like a year ago. I think there was a bundle of all the books that went out i have all the books on digital format it's not a bad game it is mm-hmm. very rooted in the 90s like the That's art cool the styles the attitude that is clearly built is, on that is it kind of like white wolf's ingrained 90s look of artwork for vampire the masquerade well the and- night night it looks like it was upgraded in 05. Yeah. So around, hey, what do you know? Around the same time. Uh, so uh, World of Darkness had some really cool 90s-tastic art, mm-hmm. but it was more dark and edgy. Yeah. This is more zany. Think of it. This is to the 90s. It feels more like Transmetropolitan right. than it does that. Vampire. I know you're a fan of that, but it, yeah. that doesn't mean anything to me. Sorry. Uh, but it is that dystopian view of the '90s. It is that it is a post cyberpunk game. It's called Underworld. Underground. 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 I'm looking okay. at it now. Yeah. I wish I could actually talk about this game and extol its virtues. But following your description and the way that you think a campaign would play after this, I think Underground is perfect for this. It uses the DC hero system. Apparently, uh, set in 1993 uh, is a commentary on the politics and society of the early 90s as expressed through the year 2021. Uh, GM needs to put hard limits for it to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the big thing about Underground <laughs> has going tiny. for it is the system where you can affect real change in a society. This gives the yep. PCs a concrete thing to strive for from the get-go. Yeah. Oh, I want to play this right now. Yeah, you it's actually build has, out your neighborhood. You can like protect it from. This actually games looks really and, interesting. This like, is this is by May- Mayfair Games, right? I don't remember who. Okay, it's by. because I'm. Me, okay. Yeah, is this it? Okay, so <laughs> it's fantastic. The, f- 
So I, I just uh, the future timeline of Underground begins with a UFO crash in 1996 in the Florida Everglades. The UFO was a small escape pod from a large interstellar starship and contained a pair of lobster-like aliens co-named Alpha and Omega. While officially a secret, the entire world witnessed the crash and the secrets of the UFO leaked to the entire world within a year. Apparently, the alien technology was based entirely on manipulation of amino acid chains and advanced biotechnology, which started a revolution in genetic engineering. This resulted in major corporations and the wealthy gaining even more power and becoming far more decadent while the poor remained oppressed. That actually really works so. for the movie as far I as story like goes. This. Because, I mean, they bioengineered him in an attempt to seize power in the government. Rapper activists Flavor Flav and Chuck D. Yes! Are assassinated on yes! August oh, 11th, God. 1998 in Columbus, Georgia by <laughs> a psychotic off-duty policeman. Well, that kind of resonates now. Uh, their untimely deaths are commemorated in a national holiday called Chuck D Day, celebrated on the first Monday in August. So it's a zany timeline. It's that weird kind of self-aware humor of the 90s uh, that mixes both a dystopian uh being upset with the current state of affairs of politics in the early 90s. Well, well apparently at this yeah. point for this, in this game America is still America because in 2003 the United States has forcibly annexed most of Canada as the 58th through 58th states and Puerto Rico and Cuba are absorbed as the 59th and 60th states. Yeah, America. Quebec separatists managed to form an independent Quebec and absorb the maritime provinces right before the American annexation creating the People's Republic of Quebec, a communist state allied with Neo-Deutschland, the United States, Mexico, and Central America, minus the Neo-Vatican, joined to form the North American Confederation. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to I hear the, the neighborhood mechanic, personally. But, it might not be on the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably not. Yeah. But um, I don't know. So what's your, what's your recommendation? Final answer. A recommendation would be underground. Okay. I, I know oh my God, we kind of awesome. go for this whole surprise thing, and that's pretty fun. Uh, so I'm not upset. I'm actually, I'm not upset with you. I know we we tried to talk about this earlier. I wanted to keep it a surprise, but whatever. I didn't like this movie, but I think Underground would do your story well. Yeah. Well, there'll be another story for the next movie. Yeah. Fuck it. So well, in answer to your question, uh, the system uh, is down. As part of the political and social nature of the game, and to encourage games to be about righting the many wrongs in the setting, the designer included parameter rules, a mechanism wherein the players could change the entire setting. The rules allowed the players to change the parameters of an area or even the country or the whole world. The drawback is that affecting one parameter, like quality of life or education, would adjust another, like take-home pay or wealth. The players, because they are heroes, can change parameters without penalties, if they perform actions that lead to change with enough time and effort. Interesting. It's a pretty cool game. All right, so yeah. uh, V for Vendetta Underground. V for Vendetta yeah. Underground. I feel off my game today, but You whatever. basically start as V. A player character begins as he's discharged from service as a genetically enhanced warrior who has been conditioned to think of himself as an ultraviolet See, I, I superhero. Don't, I don't think yeah, we should yeah, do yeah. that. We would, uh, <laughs> that. That would be wrong. I, I, I like the everyman. Yeah. Was it? Just, was it I'm Savage Worlds that had that? Because I just bought that book, but I haven't read it Savage yet. Savage Worlds had yeah. what? The, the Everyman. No, Feng the, Shui 2. Ah, Feng Shui That's 2. That's the one you bought. Yeah. yeah. Well, I bought Savage Worlds yeah. too, because you know, it came up It's a, lot. a great game. And it, it looked interesting. And it's I wanted to read it. it's going to come up many times. All right. It's, it's an extremely cinema-driven game, so there will be many movies cinema for which Savage Worlds driven Worlds games for cinema movies <laughs> yeah that, way to sell it Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> we we haven't met Words. in a while yeah i feel it's like it's been a few weeks we're a little rusty so actually i think this yeah. was a really good episode I, I feel on my game i've had alcohol so who cares i had two yeah. decently good sized shots and i had alcohol and then i had something that was rum and sweet which i don't know <laughs> really classifies as you alcohol, go from 111 but, yeah. i think that rum was what? 114 sir 114 that and down your rum to... is 70 yeah it's not that high. I know. Maybe that. I'm just off my game. I, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's been a while since I have done oh. the podcast. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> scowling at me so hard. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in uh, two weeks. Nickelback. No, that was Nickelback. stained. Stained is even worse. It's not Buck Cherry worse. Uh, it's better than Creed. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, at least we can agree on that. <laughs> one, oh, one. The only one is one. <laughs> All right. So on that note, that's where we're leaving you. Right there with Stained in Creed vibrating in your ear and open <laughs> contempt for us in your heart. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. I was Matthew. And I was Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we need to end this before we get shot. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Half Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week.